The OG Lucid was a decent phone when it debuted in 2012, but it didn't quite live up to expectations. Well, now we're in 2013, and Verizon and LG are giving it another go with the LG Lucid 2. How does this phone stack up against most smartphones released today? I'm Andrew with MobileBurn.com, and we're about to find out. The LG Lucid 2 is a follow-up to the original Lucid released on Verizon last year. The latest version of the phone has some of the things that the original lacked. It has somewhat current software with Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean, delivering many of the big ticket features that make Jelly Bean so attractive. That of course includes Google Now Search, which can provide a live view of stocks, movie theaters, news, and even your favorite sports teams. It also has LG's custom take on Android, Optimus UI, that layers over some tailor-made adjustments, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's focus on the hardware, which is in line with what someone expects from a mid-range device. The Lucid 2 has a 1.2 GHz dual-core processor developed by Qualcomm. It tends to do a good job of completing tasks, but there are moments of sluggishness when navigating in the home screen app or switching between apps can feel like it's taking a little longer than it should. There's a bit of a lag in response time, which is odd considering that this solid processor and Android 4.1 should remove the need to make it feel like things aren't going as fast as they should be. That's especially strange when you consider that it has actually solid benchmark scores so it's hard to explain the reason for the slowdown. As for the physical device, the build materials are regular plastic with a back cover that feels as if you're scratching on vinyl. The shape is kind of nice given the frame curves to fit comfortably inside your palm, but the phone itself isn't premium by any stretch of the imagination. It's 9mm thin and 129 grams in weight, so this bad boy feels just as comfortable in your pocket as it does in your hand. The small size also works well for the 4.3 inch screen, which while only has a QHD resolution, does a good enough job of displaying colors and text that you won't have many complaints. An HD display is obviously better, but your eyes won't suffer when using this device. The frame of the Lucid 2 has a few silver accents along the top side edges. On the right is a power button, the left has the volume up and down buttons, and the bottom is home to the hardware buttons that are built into the capacitive front panel. This is an LG phone for Verizon Wireless, and you'll never have to wonder about that because it tells you that at the top. Don't You'll never forget, trust me, the logo's plastered everywhere. There's also a blue indicator letting you know when you have notifications coming in. You'll also see logos on the back, of course, noting that this is a 4G LTE smartphone, and the data speeds and network strength were both very solid during my testing. If you're one of those crazy people who still makes phone calls, you'll be pleased to know that the call quality and volume levels were both solid. You'll also notice on the back that there's a 5 megapixel camera with lens, with a flash built in. And to be honest, the camera is not very good. The software does a terrible job of auto adjusting. And even with lots of manual controls for ISO, white balance scenes, and all of that, the images tend to be washed out or too bright. Uh, now, the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera is also very pixelated and very cloudy when you take images. So don't rely on that to be one to provide a great experience either. One area that the Lucid 2 does excel is battery life, and that's because there's a whole lot of battery in there. There's a big 2,460 milliamp battery. And by the way, there's a 64 gigabyte micro SD slot just in case you need more than the 8 gigabytes of internal memory. Now, power management is very efficient on the Lucid 2, so I have a hard time seeing even heavy users needing to charge the phone more than once per day. The Lucid 2 also supports the Q wireless charging standard, so you can recharge your device by using a special replacement door and a charging pad without having to plug in the phone. Just make sure the pad is plugged in, drop the phone on top of it, and you can go about your business. This does add some noticeable thickness to the device to make it even chunkier, but the wireless charging may be convenient enough to offset those problems. The software on the Lucid 2 is equally convenient, though there are definitely some cons to go along with the pros. On the pros, LG's UI makes a light aesthetic change to Android 4.1, so it's not that bad, and they actually throw in some things that add real value. For instance, quick memo is useful because you can annotate screenshots and share them easily with others. You can also use a camera app to just say cheese and take a photo, and there are some nice ways to switch between settings when you're in the notification area. 
Now, if you're a first time smartphone, there's another pro because it has something called starter mode, which basically holds your hand through the process of adding new features or getting to certain settings. It's not very appealing visually, and you know, the icon choices to begin with are kind of cheesy, but the way that they've done it, it makes it easier for first time people to learn how to use it, and you can turn this off as you go along. So, the sophistication that you get when you move to other parts of Android, uh, you can turn this off and still enjoy the phone. Now, the cons of the Lucid 2, aside from the occasional lag that I mentioned previously, are that there's a lot of preloaded software on here and none of them can be removed. You can hide them from appearing in the app drawer, but you know, the typical way of where you go to disable something, it doesn't give you the option to do that. So the apps will still be there taking up space, even though you hide them from appearing in the app drawer. And when you do that, be sure to resort your apps because otherwise you'll end up with a lot of blank spaces and it's gonna look weird. Another annoyance is that there's a giant Wi-Fi indicator in the notification area. It's huge, it's persistent, and it's really annoying. I don't need to be told that I'm on Wi-Fi. I'm the one that turned it on. And if you do turn Wi-Fi off, it's going to tell you, hey, you turned Wi-Fi off. I know that. So now the question is, should you buy the LG Lucid 2? The cons list is kind of small when you compare it to the pros. Uh, and there are definitely more than a few grabs to make about this phone. Uh, some of the software decisions, the hardware doesn't feel the greatest around. But if you judge the Lucid 2 within its class of just saying this is a mid-range device, is it solid? Is it going to do what I need it to do? And the answer is going to be yes. It's a, a quality phone uh, within its class, and it'll probably handle most of the things that the average user throws at it. Power users definitely won't be pleased, but the Lucid 2 will meet the needs of many others. For first-time smartphone users or someone on a budget, the Lucid 2 is a solid buy, especially when you consider that you don't really buy it because it's available now for free on a two-year agreement at Verizon. This is Andrew from Mobile Burn doing a review of the LG Lucid 2. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. And if so, feel free to click like and subscribe.